Hey, good morning, everyone. So today I want to start off by uh, doing something a little more different than what I would say you're typically used to uh, in my videos. I want to talk about coming to Jesus. And I know I'm coming out and saying that and, you know, you may not um, understand fully uh, my position. But, uh, you know, I want to talk about how I got saved and why, you know, for me, it was important to to go through that process. And and uh, and I want to share my story because I think a lot of times we uh, we go through things, uh, you know, in the world or people that that know us may not know entirely what's going on with us. And then they may see us, you know, at at one point in our lives and then, you know, they later on see us somewhere else and they don't understand what happened or understand the full context of, uh, you know, how you got to from point A to point B. So as of recently, I've been reading scripture and I uh, I purchased this, this nice Bible, King James Version, beautiful, beautiful Bible. And, and I'm so, so proud of it because I've been actually, uh, I've been wanting one for a long time and, um, you know, just kind of not knowing what to purchase. So I, I, I held off and I did a little research and, and I found found the right one for me. So, I, like I mentioned, I started reading scripture and I first started with the Gospels and that's Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. You know, I started there because that's where you'll learn more about who Jesus is uh, or who he was or really who he is because he's he's resurrected and he's still alive. He's still very much alive. And the truth is, I never really knew who he was. You know, I mean, I knew about him and, you know, you know, the story, the, 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 the story that everybody knows, really. But I didn't know him, you know, personally. And I didn't understand. Um, well, I'll say this. Um, uh, there's a pastor that once once mentioned to me that in order for us to know who we are, uh, with Jesus, we need to first understand who we were without him. And so um, in, in knowing who Jesus was and how I transitioned from, you know, the, where I was living in sin and I was just destructive really to my to myself. And it was important for me to get to know him, know who he was, uh, for me to, you know, f fully give myself to him and, and accept him as my Lord and Savior. And in doing so, it actually helped build my faith, build my trust um, in God. And it it's not like, you know, you're saved and then tomorrow things change and, you know, you're, everything's easier now. Now, the Bible does say that, you know, once you're born again, uh, the old has passed and the new um, is now, right? It's come. And I'm paraphrasing that because it, you know, it does say something like that. But, um, you know, you're still in this world and you're having to adapt now to a way of looking to live or wanting to live versus how you lived in the past. So now, um, you know, after reading uh, the Gospels, I'm currently reading uh, Ephesians, which is, uh, you know, there's a couple books be before Ephesians. And, you know, so I don't recommend at all just starting at Ephesians because like where I'm at now, had I not read the Gospels, I wouldn't I wouldn't understand in full context, uh, you know, what's going on in Ephesians and and how that story builds to where I am now. So in Ephesians, uh, in, in Ephesians and the books prior, you uh, I met Paul and you know, I, I, I heard his story, um, his experiences and how he turned from prosecuting those that followed Jesus to actually meeting Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, and going on to being one of the most influential, uh, if not the most influential uh, leaders in spreading the word of Christ and God and um you know, when he decided to follow Jesus, he was actually um, stoned, half 
practically to death. How he survived that, I, I don't know. Uh, he was imprisoned and he faced other, other countless um, challenges and threats in his life. But uh, like I mentioned right now, I'm in Ephesians and chapter one and two talks about God's love and his grace. And like I said, I wouldn't recommend starting there because you wouldn't really understand it. And you have to work your way through the the entire book to understand, um, you know, where I am now. And what also has led to Paul um, being where he is and why he's written the books that he's written and how much Christianity has grow, grown. But I do want to emphasize in reading the Bible, right? Because although, you know, in my story, when I got saved, um, I didn't have a lot of guidance. I didn't have a mentor. Um, I always felt like I wanted to read the Bible. And even when I was in men groups, men's groups, uh, connect groups or, or um, fellowship, uh, we actually read other books that had to do with, you know, how to, how to be a man of Christ, how, um, you know, to, to have fellowship with others. But we never got to reading the Bible, which which like it never made sense to me. But uh, nonetheless, I don't take away from that time. I just feel like um, I always wanted to dive into the Bible and it, it never uh, it never presented itself or the opportunity there until uh, just uh, late last year. And so, like I said, I want to emphasize reading the Bible and starting at the Gospels. And I also want to encourage you to turn away from, uh, you, you know, living in sin. I, I feel, this is my opinion, I feel that a lot of people uh, are scared of how, you know, you'll be or they're scared of the unknown, you know, right? Because you, you've lived in this way of just knowing to live or being conditioned to live in sin that it's almost like natural to you. And so you're scared to turn away from that. But, you know, I want to encourage you to find a way to, and the way is, uh, you know, reading the Bible and getting into the word of God. Uh, so to turn away from sin. So by by no means, by no means, am I, am I saying this story or am I talking to you guys and pointing the finger and calling you a sinner because... Uh, you know, we're all sinners. And in fact, the Bible says that we're all sinners and we all fall fall short of God's glory. So, and that's in Romans uh, 3, verse 23. So, like I mentioned, when your world is all about living in sin and you're conditioned to thinking that way, you don't, you don't think nothing's wrong. You actually feel like that's normal. So, and that's actually one of the things that the devil wants you to feel. He he wants you to feel like that's normal. He wants to keep us away from God. You see, when Jesus died for our sins, it gave us the chance to be with God through his sacrifice. And the, de the devil really wants us to live in wrath. Um, he wants to bring wrath. And he has no peace, so therefore he wants us to not live in peace. And that's what God brings us. God brings us peace. So I I encourage you once again to find uh you know find someone that is in the word. It you know, I hope this message encourages you to pick up a Bible, purchase a Bible, or even download an app that um could could uh could present you the word of God. So I want to ask you a few questions and, you know, just you can answer them sincerely. I hope that you do. You can, you know, comment below too, but I want to ask you if you pray, you know, do you pray? Um, do you have anxiety in your life? And the Bible says actually that we shouldn't worry. In fact, that we shouldn't worry about anything. And that we should make all our requests known to our Lord Jesus Christ. And through our prayers, he'll bless us uh, with his peace. And that surpasses any understanding that we have, right? So 
get get yourself into a, a daily habit of prayer. Um, you know, learn to be sincere about it. And if you build that in your life, if you build a prayer life, I, I guarantee you, I I most definitely guarantee you that you will find peace. You will uh, reduce in anxiety, any depression you have, uh, most issues that you have in your life. Answers will be, I mean, your questions will be answered. Um, you know, he'll keep your mind and your heart from corruption and any de deception if you pray, if you call on Jesus Christ. So the Bible literally shows us how to live. Um, and it shows us God's love and it shows us God's mercy. Um, so I want to encourage you to build your prayer life because I know the good that is done for me and how it's built my faith and build my trust in God. So if you live righteously, um, it's almost guaranteed that your prayers will be answered now you have to have patience. You have to have sincerity in in what you're talking about, and uh, you know, follow the commandments. Follow follow the commandments that the Lord has has put out there for us. You know, ask Him to help you to turn away from sin, turn away from lust, turn away from the love of money, uh, because those um, those things never lead to fulfillment. You know, I've been in a position where I had a lot of money and, you know, I felt re very successful, but I felt empty. I felt a void. And until I came to um, be born again and accept Jesus Christ into my life and to, as my Lord and Savior, uh, I've, I've, I've left. That, that feeling has been filled and it's been uh, overfilled, if anything. There's an overflow um, from from accepting Christ for, and feel embraced in his love and, you know, what he has for your life, because we're all sinners. That's, that's a fact. We're all sinners, but God wants to bring us into his glory and he wants to open the doors of heaven for all of us, for you, for me. You know, the way of doing that is by knocking on the door of heaven with our prayers and through fellowship with other Christians as well. You know, I, I recommend that that you do repent when you come to 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 Jesus, when you come before God, uh, you want to humble yourself um, because we live in a world where we think everything is revolving around us. So I'm going to ask that you please, you know, uh, humble yourself before God, ask for forgiveness, repent. You're still going to deal with issues of, uh, you know, any trials or tribulations, you're still going to be tempted. Um, and it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult because those demons are going to present themselves and you're going to see them uh, for what they are. You know, they're not, it's not going to just vanish. But like I said, even for me, it's a work in progress. It's, it's still in process and it's a battle every single day, but you will get through it. But the only one that for sure can heal us is Jesus Christ. That's the only person that can heal us is Jesus Christ. And in the Bible, it says that, uh, well, Jesus told us um, to go in faith and preach the word to all the nations. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So a lot of times, you know, we, we become born, we call ourselves born again Christians or Christians in general. And you don't often see too many people uh, spreading the, the gospel, uh, spreading the word of Jesus. It's just like, okay, I'm a Christian, but they keep it to themselves. And, you know, really God is calling on all Christians to spread the word, to share the grace of God, and to not just keep it for ourselves, right? Uh, he wants us to share the love of Jesus uh, with one another. One of the first things that you have to identify within yourself is that you have to repent. And when you come before before God, before Jesus Christ, you have to humble yourself once again. You have to repent. That's very important uh, because you have to be honest with yourself. I, I, I once heard someone say that uh, getting into heaven is easy as ABC, right? A is um, admitting uh, that you're a sinner, uh, you know, by repentance, by asking for forgiveness. And B is believing in Christ, that he died for our sins, that he was crucified. And C is confess 
confess your sins uh, before God. And that goes back to humbling yourself. So I want to I want to leave you guys with uh, one verse that um, I think is very, very uh, special. And it's in the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 18. It says to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God and that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those sanctified by faith in me. So that right there just tells you that there's no other way to God unless you accept Jesus Christ. And that is, that's powerful to me, right? So I know I didn't really get into how I got saved, but um, I'll do that on a later video. But I just want to encourage you, if you are struggling, if you are feeling uh, a void in your life, you know, pick up a Bible, um, call someone, talk to someone that is a Christian and that you have trust in. Uh, you could even contact me. You could comment below. I'll reach out to you, you know, if you really need somebody to talk to. But I highly encourage you, especially with everything that's going on. You know, we're living in very, very scary times. And the Bible if you read the Bible, I mean, it's pretty much showing us everything uh, will come to pass. And, and we see it more and more now. So I just want to thank you for taking the time. If you like this, uh, you know, just send me a quick note. Put a comment down below. Like I said, this isn't a, a typical video that I do. Uh, but I want to do more of these. And I want to be a little more personal. I, I want to I reflect on, on my journey with uh with god and and i want to document it and if it could potentially help someone uh come to the lord i want to build god's army if i could help out in any way uh, please comment send me a message take care guys i really appreciate your time once again uh so comment like share take care